As promised, we're now back for part two of this mini-series. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I'd highly recommend it before watching this one because, you know, the whole order thing. Anyways, in case you haven't seen the first part, we're going to be going over the remaining 15 NHL teams' biggest rivals and, more specifically, their most hated current opponent to face. And with that, here is part two of every team's most hated rival. I feel like Nashville is one of those teams where you could just go several different ways in selecting their most loathed foe out there. I mean, there's St. Louis and Chicago to start, but to me, just knowing how he did their playoff series always have gotten when they face one another, I have to go with the Dallas Stars on this one. And the player that comes to mind that probably gets the Preds blood boiling on the regular is the big man himself, Jamie Alexiak. Not only is Alexiak just a towering, intimidating force to be reckoned with, but he also always seems to be in the middle of countless scraps against Nashville and is usually dropping the gloves against them as well. Probably one of those rivalries that just stands out at first glance as the Devils and Rangers have had a lengthy history of beef since the Devils came to town. Definitely the most memorable moment to me uh, between them has to be the Avery and Berger incident, which forced the Avery role and sparked a bout of bad blood between the players. With that being said, reasons for there to be some distaste haven't went away, as along with their close proximity, there's also been the whole Capo Caco Jack Hughes debate, which has kind of died down at this point, but it was still a reason for these two teams to naturally clash regardless. But one player to me that the Devils have to despise to a high degree isn't Capo Caco, but instead an even more recent addition in Jacob Truba. I mean, for Nico Heischer to go after you in rare fashion, I mean, the guy has literally four penalty minutes on the season right now, so yeah, uh, that pretty much sums it up right there. And yet another team that definitely has no love lost when it comes to the blue shirts is the New York Islanders as a pair of the New York teams is definitely geographically closer than New York's third team in the Buffalo Sabres. Therefore, naturally, I chose the Rangers and narrowing it down even further, longtime Ranger Chris Kreider, who is not only a pain to play against due to his work ethic and talent, but also his physicality. That has to be a combination alone that gets Isles fans going every time the Rangers come to town. Definitely another guy that is never fun to face is forward Cal Clutterbuck. As similarly to Chuck Ryder, Clutterbuck possesses a blue collar work ethic that as an opposing team or fan base facing him would naturally drive you nuts by default. To put it in perspective just a little, out of only 43 games played thus far on the season, number 15 has 155 hits, which is pretty insane if you ask me. Pair that with his willingness to settle the score, which he was already doing against NYR even during his days with Minnesota. Well, you got yourself a real recipe for some distaste. As has been the theme thus far, the guys that are mentally taxing for teams to face naturally become those that they despise over time. And for the Ottawa Senators, well, one of those players that is never fun to face has to be Brendan Gallagher. I think we can all recall how spirited things quickly became last season as Galley threw a hit on Thomas Shabbat, which unfortunately caused injury and Brady Kachuk to hold him accountable. Shoot, Gallagher was dropping the gloves against the Sens in his rookie year. As I mentioned in part one, he plays a viciously tenacious game and isn't afraid to test the goalie a little within that front screen or, you know, to smile at you while you're pounding his face in. Therefore, when it comes to Canada's capital team, number 11 isn't their most favorited player considering. Um, yeah, out of <laughs> most of these, I feel like Sidney Crosby being the Flyers' most hated opponent is one of the easiest to figure out. As Crosby not only has the second most points statistically behind the Islanders against them uh, out of all teams, which are in the triple digits, might I add, but... He's also admitted publicly to the media on the spot that he doesn't like any players that play for the city of brotherly love, and rightfully so, as there's really not a player more despised in Flyerland than number 87, and that's a sure fact. While you may have suspected logically that Pittsburgh in turn would have a flyer at the top of their hate list as well, well, guess again, as Tom Wilson definitely takes the cake here. When a player goes out of his way to injure multiple players on your roster and pretty much well, laugh it off, if you're a Pens fan, you probably have zero respect for number 43. And really, from a general standpoint, I feel like most fan bases, at least within the vicinity anyways, such as Boston or even Philadelphia, probably feel the exact same way about this character right here. 
Speaking of Tom Wilson, the one man that has been known to take it best to Wilson is tough guy Ryan Reeves. But not only has Reeves clashed with Wilson during his career, but also with fellow heavyweight Evander Kane. From social media sparring matches to countless on ice altercations, Kane and Reeves have been one of the most notable and entertaining rivalries, in my opinion, that the league has had to offer in a while. So yes, he may have been coined the Muffin Man in San Jose, but hey, at least the guy can own it, am I right? I think the All-Star game in St. Louis kind of summed it up here. Uh, anyways, Patrick Kane is most likely not the first player that comes to mind for Blues fans that they'd like to have a drink with. Rather, Kane, over the years, has been a thorn in STL's side for most of his career. I could go on here, but a few moments that stand out are the OT winner in Chicago in 2014, his goal in double OT in 2016 as well in the postseason that, I mean, was insanely ridiculous, and the time that Kane decided to go after Brian Elliott in the crease. So So yeah, in summary, uh, thus far, there's a few reasons why players make this list. Either they're ridiculously good and constantly taking it to teams, insanely hard to play against, or just plain dirty. Patrick Hornquist is here, well, because of the first two, meaning he's a very good effective net front presence that can score at will, plus he's one of the most high-tempo players that I know of, uh, trust me, he was in Pittsburgh for several seasons. With that being said, Hornquist will not only be netting pucks past your team's tendy, but he'll be sure to be playing a physical in-your-face style of game Game that would drive any opposing player up the wall, or should I say boards in this case? Well, I definitely could have went the Ottawa route and went with his brother, or even fellow pest Brad Marchand in Beantown. Considering how much beef number 19 has had with Toronto as of late, I decided it was the logical answer in this case. As Kachuk has been the topic of conversation seemingly each and every time these two Canadian teams face each other. From the Jack Campbell incident, to lashing out at Jake Muzzin, to dropping the mitts with Hall all in this season, the forward has definitely moved up to the prime spot, I would say, on most Leafs fans' hate lists. If you've been a hockey fan, or Canucks fan specifically, long term, you'll completely understand as to why the ride is here. As Marchand was not only pretending the Sedins were pinatas, basically, in the Stanley Cup Finals of 2011, but he was also sure to taunt the team after drinking from Lord Stanley the season after. Gotta hand it to him though, he did do the complete ensemble of raising the cup and kissing his imaginary Stanley Cup ring there. Even still, that paired with his questionable hit on Sammy Solo probably had something to do with why Brandon Prust was more than willing to toss away $5,000 just to whack number 63 where it hurts the most. Yep, you guessed it. Just as Philadelphia has made him public enemy number one, the feeling is also rampant in DC as well. Ever since day one of his NHL career, number 87 has been constantly pitted up against Capitals captain Alex Ovechkin. This paired with the two teams' close proximity has made for very intense and highly contested contests over the years. A few moments that stand out between the Penguins captain and the Caps are when he and Ovechkin had a heated war of words in 2013, the slash on Sid that sent him into a rage and caused him to leave the game, and the night where both the grade 8 and Crosby had dueling hat tricks in the playoffs of 09. Just to name a few, but obviously I could go on. While there are definitely other choices that would probably still make sense here, considering how angry Kachuk was able to make the entire Jets team and even Paul Maurice, uh, and the fan base alike, I'm sure, last postseason, following the question entanglement with Mark Shifley, I had to include Chucky yet again. As well, it seemed anyways that after number 55 was sidelined for Winnipeg, things quickly took a turn for the worse, as Calgary was able to take the series. But hey, I guess karma does exist, because we, we all saw what happened to Kachuk later on. 